Well, good morning, everyone from New York. I'm Anne Marie Green. I'm Vladimir Dutip. Here's a look at the stories grabbing our attention right now. Breaking this morning, a prisoner swap is expected between the United States and Iran. What we know about the deal and the Americans returning home. The president's son, Hunter Biden, has filed a lawsuit against the IRS. The accusations he's making against the agency stemming from an interview with CBS News. The state of California is going after some of the biggest oil companies in the world, accusing them of engaging in a decades-long campaign of deception. We'll sit down with the state's attorney general to break down the allegations and what he's hoping to achieve. Plus, the New York Giants made their biggest comeback win in franchise history in the Super Bowl era. A CBS Sports HQ analyst who used to play in the NFL is going to join the stream to talk about how they pulled it off. It's been a crazy weekend in <laughs> football, Anne-Marie. I don't know. We were, you know I'm an Eagles fan. They weren't playing. We were all taking naps. That's right. <laughs> we're <laughs> going to break to it down uh, a little bit later in the show. But let's begin this morning uh, with breaking news. Five Americans wrongfully detained in Iran are expected to be freed this morning as part of a prisoner swap worked out by the Biden administration. So here is what we know about their movements today. A source tells CBS News that the prisoners arrived at the airport in Tehran this morning. And multiple sources tell CBS News that all five prisoners and two family members are on the flight. Chief Foreign Affairs Correspondent Margaret Brennan is following this story. Iran announced Monday that five detained Americans are expected to be released today. They include Imad Shargi, Siamak Namazi, Murad Tabaz, and two Americans whose names are being withheld. For the first time since 2015, 51-year-old Siamak Namazi would be free. He spent the past eight years in the notorious Evin prison in Iran on what the U.S. State Department considers trumped-up charges of espionage. Shargi and Tabaz were arrested in 2018. All are considered wrongfully detained. In exchange, Iran says charges against five Iranians in the U.S. will be dropped. Two will remain in the U.S. The Biden administration reached a tentative deal in August, but the final pieces only came together in recent days. The money traveled from South Korea to Switzerland and then into a monitored bank account in Qatar, a deal the White House has repeatedly defended. This is not a payment of any kind. It's not ransom. These aren't U.S. taxpayer dollars. And we haven't lifted a single one of our sanctions on Iran. The U.S. Treasury will monitor the money and restrict its use to humanitarian purposes. But Iran's president, whose country is badly in need of economic relief, dismissed any limits. The Islamic Republic of Iran will decide to, exp to spend it wherever uh, we need it. Republican Mike Turner, chair of the House Intelligence Committee, is concerned the financial relief will incentivize future hostage taking. I mean, whenever you put a price on American heads, you get an, a, an incentive for people to take more more hostages. You know, these, the are, $6 billion in frozen these are oil revenue. You know, billions and billions of dollars, and so that's a concern. So joining me now is CBS News Chief White House Correspondent Nancy Cordes, normally at the White House, but you're here in New York because you're covering the U.N. Uh, General Assembly, so we got a chance to snag you to talk about this. Remarkable deal. Um, what are we hearing from the White House? Why is this happening now? Well, it's been in the works for a long time, and there were so many different pieces that had to come together mm -hmm. just for example, moving $6 billion from South Korea to uh, this bank account in Doha required several steps. Mm -hmm. It had to be converted into euros uh, from South Korean currency, and all of these restrictions had to be placed on how it can be used. Uh, and then beyond that, there's the question of the prisoners. Who is the U.S. going to release? Who is Iran going to release? Mm -hmm. uh, on the U.S. side, we are releasing five individuals, some of whom have already uh, seen their cases go through the um, court system, some of whom were still awaiting trial. But all of their cases had to do with nonviolent offenses. These mm -hmm. were people, for example, who violated sanctions rules. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them, we know, are returning to Iran. 